going to item number three, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Do we have any changes? No changes from staff. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to zero. Moving on to the next item, which is proclamations and presentations, tab number two. Um, Spirit Chamber of Commerce update with Mr. Barry and happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, report is short. Uh, not a lot coming up. This is the time of year that things slow down. One big event upcoming uh, next Thursday night, uh, December 12th. It's an annual event every year. Seacoast uh, Bank has a joint business after hours holiday party. Bring them wrap presents for kids. And it's a joint between Eustace to Ferries, uh, Mount Dora, and all. It's a huge, huge party. It's a great, uh, great fun party. So I hope you can be there. This year's going to be at their Mount Dora Bridge, which is the old first green bank on 441. Um, other than that, the other real notable date to put on your agenda is January 22nd. The monthly business luncheon, the first one of the year, is going to be Mr. Drury is the speaker. So we'd love to have uh, as many of you there as possible. And I went ahead and gave you the dates for all the key things for the rest of the year so that you know when our golf tournament it is, when the Taste of Tiberi's scavenger quest, the gala and the, uh, those things, so that hopefully you can go ahead and put those into your calendars. Uh, hopefully all of them are going to stay that way throughout, throughout the year. The only one that might change, we're waiting on the school calendar to be announced, and the teacher luncheon that day might change if they don't come back like we did this year. And that was everything I had for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Moving on to item number five, swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of ex parte communications. No qualms at judicial hearings today, ma'am. So we'll move on to item number six, reading of all ordinances and resolutions into the record. Thank you, Mayor. We have three ordinances at first reading and one resolution. Ordinance 2019-19, an ordinance of the city of Tiberias amending the boundaries of the city by annexing approximately 0.35 acres of land located at 15219 and 15221 Old U.S. Highway 441 rezoning said property from Lake County Line Industrial LM to City of Tavares Residential Multifamily RMF2, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tavares Council, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2019-20, an ordinance of the City of Tavares, Florida, amending the Tavares Comprehensive <coughs> Plan Future Land Use Map 2020, providing for a change of future land use designation on approximately 0.35 acres of land located at 15219 and 15221 Old U.S. Highway 441 from County Urban High Density to City Medium Density MED, providing for severability and conflicts, providing for transmittal and providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2019-21, an ordinance of the City of Tavares amending Chapter 15, Pensions and Retirement, Article 5, Firefighters Pension Trust Fund of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tavares, amending Section 15-108, Disability, amending Section 15-129, Reemployment after Retirement, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. And Resolution 2019-09, a resolution of the City of Tavares, Florida, relating to the State Revolving Fund Loan Program, adopting the Fiscal Sustainability Plan for the Downtown CRA Stormwater Improvement Project and an effective date. Thank you, Ms. Nevek. We'll move on to item number seven, the consent agenda. Does anyone want to pull any of the tabs from the consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Five to zero. We'll move on to item number eight, which is resolutions, which we have none under just resolutions. I believe it is under general government. So we'll move on to ordinances uh, for public hearing. We have two items for first reading, which were just entered into the record. However, because of first reading, that we don't take public comment on tab six, seven, or eight. But the second reading will be 
and done in the future where we'll be able to take public comments. Moving on to second reading, uh, we have nothing listed for this meeting today, so we'll move on to item number 10, general government, and on to tab 9, which is board appointments. Um, <clears throat> there are seat vacancies in our expiring terms on the library board and police pension board. Um, specifically, the library board has one seat vacancy due to the resignation of board member Catherine Cressman. Um, the vacancies for the remainder of the term expire in June 2020. The city advertised the vacancy in the daily commercial and the city website for applications. One application was received from Lurleen Lawton. Um, so, uh, without any objection, I will go ahead and appoint Ms. Lawton uh, to that vacancy on the library board for the remainder of the term. Um, regarding the police pension board, there are two. Ex Need a vote of approval? Yeah, you make the appointment of the council as well. So, having the, the appointment, um, I guess, just show of hands, uh, anybody, all those in favor of the slot being awarded? Aye. 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 Uh, all, so, five to zero for the appointment. Moving on to the Police Pension Board. There are two expiring seats on the Police Pension Board, including one seat currently held by John Clark, and one fifth trustee seat held by Eric Filkin. Uh, the two seats are for two-year terms from November 2019 to November 2021. The city advertised the daily commercial and city website for applications. At December 20th, 2019 quarterly pension board meeting, the board reappointed Pierre Pilkin to the fifth trustee seat. Uh, and the city council shall, in accordance with state law, ratify that appointment and see the ministerial act. So we'll go ahead uh, for board member Pilkin. Um, all those in favor, uh, so we we'll reappoint him as well, but all those in favor of his reappointment, aye. Uh, five to zero for his reappointment. And then for the other open seat, uh, the city received board request for reappointment from Sierra Piqueta, uh, Foster Foster, plan administrator on behalf of John Clark to the city council appointed seat. Uh, the city did not receive any applications, so uh, I believe we're seeking the reappointment of Mr. Clark. Is that correct? All those in favor of reappointing Mr. Clark uh, to the board? Aye. Uh, five to zero. Um, <clears throat> I believe that concludes that tab. So we will move on to tab number 10. Um, I don't see Mr. Serta. Um, so should we move forward without him or should we table it until move forward? Mm -hmm. So we're moving on to tab number 10, which is plastic straws. So previously at the October meeting, Mr. Sadar, our audience we heard, asked if this council would be interested in. Um, banning plastic straws from its parks. Um, he was told that he would need to meet with the city administrator and that it could be um, looked at and agendized at a future uh, meeting. He did make the appointment with me. I met with him. He provided information regarding other cities around Florida that have banned plastic straws. Uh, I advised him that it would be several months before I could uh, work it into an agenda. Um, and so I worked it into December, this meeting, December the 4th. I advised him that it would be on the agenda December the 4th and that he would be welcome to have three minutes or so to talk about um, his desire to have uh, plastic straws made in the city. Um, I provided some information uh, as to other cities in Florida that have banned plastic straws also pointed out that if you head in this direction, sometimes they grow to banning other plastics like plastic cups in the Entertainment District, which has an ordinance that um, specifically requires uh, beverages to be in plastic cups. So if the board did decide to move forward with banning plastic straws and plastic cups, we would need to um, change that ordinance. If the board decided to move forward with banning plastic straws, plastic cups, we of course would uh, develop uh, an ordinance. There would be several, two readings. We would be meeting on it a couple more times. All would be invited to comment on that concept. At this time, you have uh, the information I think you need to discuss, deliberate, whether you want to uh, ban plastic straws or cups or not. Uh, and I believe you have some speakers who would like to speak on that as well. If you have any questions from staff, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. And I'll go ahead and open this up for public comment. I have Denise Larada. Denise 
particular around Pearl Harbor. I know plastic is um, really bad for the environment. As you all know, I cruise a lot, and the garbage, the plastic that you see in the ocean is absolutely incredible. And I think there needs to be some control taken for it. I really don't have an, an opinion though, about plastic straws. I know there are some environmentally friendly um, materials that don't cost much more for, for a uh, business than plastic straws. I mean, you can get glass ones and metal ones, and there's lots of options. And if you you know look into that, that's fine. But my larger concern is for the entertainment district. Um, since they have had this ordinance in place for plastic cups, um, I would hope that if you go along these lines that there's some a lot of consideration taken into not um, making their businesses incur any additional expenses on that. And then I would also wonder about, I don't know what kind of bags the prop shop uses, but if they use plastic bags, I would uh, think that maybe if you go down this road, somebody's going to come back and say we don't need plastic bags either. So please consider all of those things. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Loretta. Next I have Ms. Eaton. Drinking from a plastic cup. <laughs> Served in a <the> hallway. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> My name is Diana Eaton, 714 North St. Clair Abrams Avenue, Tavares. Um, I agree with uh, Denise about the same, uh, the plastic, the cost involved. Um, me, at the ranch, we prefer um, paper straws, um, but I think this should be optional. Um, I walk around with plastic cups, and I just don't know what the meaning will be behind the definition if we ban the plastic cups and straws, whereas who polices that? Um, is it just that the restaurants that serve the drinks would not be able to um, provide plastic straws? I don't know if somebody can answer that for me, but I'm kind of like, it's getting intrusion to government taking uh, a place in what we do. I think we should just table this and, and leave it for maybe another time or look at being an optional um, ban. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm saying before you walk away, man, you said out at the ranch, you guys have gone to paper straws instead of plastic straws. Is that correct? That is correct. Can you tell me uh, what the price difference is for those? No, I don't have that available, but I can get that for you. Can you tell me what the quality difference is in those? Um, we use those for our consumers. I personally haven't used it. I don't use straws at the ranch, but I can get back with you on that one if you'd like me to. Yes, ma'am. I will do that. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Yoko. Why don't you let he requested it. I don't have it yet, so you're up. Vance Yoakum at 12619 Milwaukee, Tavares. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I also drank from a plastic cup out there, and it worked pretty well. Uh, and I have used plastic straw cups walking around the grounds here, as well as in Eustis and in Mount Dora. And uh, so they're helpful to have. I did bring a, an example, in case you forgot, what plastic straws look like. This is some courtesy of Mr. Sabatini, Representative Sabatini. Um, I, I do agree, though, because I, I read a lot of different things, and one of them is about the issue of plastic in the oceans and everything else. And the plastic doesn't degrade, it is an issue. And uh, I would uh, encourage you that maybe a couple things. One is that if you want to uh, do something, one, I do not believe in regulations in putting in a process where then Mr. Lugans has to hire two code enforcers to go around and check for plastic straws uh, in everybody's uh, goods. Uh, but I would think of it like you have these flower festivals and other things like that where they don't mandate that you decorate your lawn, and, but what they do is they come up with an award or uh, some sort of a uh, incentive program where they give uh, uh, you know, recognition to people who do um, implement something that uh, does this. It's, that means it isn't a regulation saying you have to do it because we want to maintain our freedoms of choice, but you can come up with a program to do that as an alternative. Uh, there also are a lot of 
uh, e emerging technologies around the world. I see them reported on BBC um, in different alternative straws made out of uh, different materials that uh, do last long enough as opposed to some that apparently are failing. The, 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 the basic paper straws, they don't always last very long. Uh, but there are others that are being developed from other materials. I think I keep thinking one was made out of rice, but uh, they last long enough that the consumer can use them for one time use. So with that, uh, if you do want to look at it, I would say never regulate something uh, from being used, but instead provide some sort of incentive process and maybe do some research and provide some alternatives that uh, uh, seem to work. Thanks. I believe next we have Mr. Serta. And I just see now you have three minutes. Thank you, David Serta, Portland Park, Florida. You know, I believe in recycling. Plastic is a real concern. I was at Orlando County uh, Commissioner's meeting yesterday, Jerry Dennis, the mayor. And my God, they're going green. They're following exactly what the Buddy Dyer has done of adding plastic bags. One time, Mr. Dyer pulled and take and plastic straws at the Amway Center with a magic plate. Uh, at that Camp World Stadium, where the Orange Bowl used to be played, and at uh, <coughs> Dr. Phillips Center across from City Hall. After I got done publishing comedy, uh, Jerry Demings said uh, he was so happy to see me again. He goes, I'm going to surprise you. <laughs> and my God, they are doing the same thing on my phone. I have the big screen. They're going to ban plastic bags. One time, you started with containers and plastic straws in the venues they own, in the county of Orange. The restaurants are followed in line. And by God, they're going green down in uh, Orange County. We all do the same thing in our county. I reached out to the environmental uh, legislation today, affairs. They are very green. SeaWorld is listening to me. They're very green. But, you know, I got the cards of Mayor, Mayor Buddy Dyer right here, and I got a beautiful uh, Who's the mayor now? Amanda Brogan. I got a beautiful candle, candle calendar for you from Buddy Dyer's office. And I strictly talked about a bottle bill about the governor, and they're listening to me, and they know that you guys are I'm taking a vote right now, or the discussion. Uh, John Curry was nice enough that, that, you know, he's a pilot here in the, in the uh, seaplane camp of the world, but I want you to know, that even uh, Gary Dunning signed my Bible right there at the bottom. God bless Gary Dunning. Uh, they're going green, and you guys ought to go green, too. You know, it's what the world needs. I mean, uh, you know, plastic bags, bags are a concern. Uh, in, in Australia, uh, Bangladesh, India, they banned plastic bags. And I'm sure it's pushing that for the governor. We need that for our state, California, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico have already done. And this is things that need to be done because what we can do today can improve all our futures for our kids. See, you know, we're all here for a little while. But we need to take action when? Well, the time is now. The time is now. You know, a bottle bill, look how many states have it. Iowa. Connecticut, Hawaii, Maine, Michigan, New York, Vermont, Miami, Oregon, or Michigan, Oregon. You know, we need to do steps in Florida. We're way behind in environmental uh, issues. And we need to step up to the plate for our kids' future. And you know, they're banning plastic straws in Volusia County, down in Miami. And my God, we can do it right here in Central Florida. And you guys can be the leaders, the gladiators, to show for our kids' future. There, I was at an elementary school in Leesburg today. There's a child taking environmental uh, uh, report, and she's so concerned. She does not use plastic straws. I've got a guy at a bar in Baders at Games. He doesn't leave the straws for the villagers at his bar unless they ask. Mr. Serta, you're in front of time. So oh, no, like can I give you the calendar? Uh, you uh, you can leave the calendar over here in the corner. And I have the okay. mayor's card of uh, the city of Orlando. I want you to have that. Well, thank you deserve it. Mayor to Mayor, God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Second. All right, I believe that closes public input. I am ready to cancel. Does anyone have any comments or questions? All right, we'll jump in, Mr. Stevenson. Um, I've been to some pretty powerful sermons here in the city of Tiberias. <laughs> that dude has some passion. Um, if that was the deciding factor, that was compelling. I love the idea. I don't know how it would be implicated, like how it would be implemented. 
I don't know how you'd really do that because I believe that it would go from straws to cups. To, I, I think styrofoam is just as bad, isn't it? I think everybody's booing on styrofoam also. So you couldn't go from plastic cups to styrofoam cups. I don't know what we would do in our entertain, entertainment district uh, without the ability to provide someone a cup. Can't tell them they can walk up and down the street and not give them the ability to do that. So I don't really know practically how that would work out. I wonder, honestly, what the cost is. I, I think we do need to look beyond ourselves. I think we need to worry about the oceans. We need to worry about the future. Uh, and it's short-sighted. It's myopic for us to think that, that everything's okay if we just make it through this world ourselves. I think we need to look beyond ourselves. So I agree with that for us with the argument. But I wonder what the real implications are. I wonder if the city, if the uh, businesses would be behind like an incentive program, like Mr. Yoakum suggested. Uh, but really, truly, I'm most curious about the numbers and what the alternative is. If you can't have plastic and you can't have styrofoam, what would you have? That, those are my questions. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Yeah. Um, Mr. Sir, I, I respect your uh, your enthusiasm. Uh, you know, you make some some compelling points, and I mean, I'm all about protecting the environment. Um, but you know, I gotta agree. You know, I just uh, I just really don't want to see this. Uh, you know, more government regulations. Um, you know, the city is doing you know what we can. I would like to see maybe um, you know we have our downtown events. I don't know. I would, I would you know be for putting in. Something in our vendors' agreement, you know, not not telling them they have to um, ban straws, but you know, just give them the idea that you know, the city of Tavares is you know looking out for the environment and just you know encourage them to uh, you know go green if at all possible. Um, but right now, this uh, you know isn't really something that, that I could uh, see supporting. Mr. Boyes, I appreciate Mr. Sarger's passion. Um, it's admirable. Um, I think we're not ready for this at this point. Uh, I think it'll be a, an incredible expense to our businesses and enforcement. And putting something to paper that we cannot enforce is a huge concern. Why do it? Ms. Vister, do you want to comment? Um, well, I mean, I like the idea. Everyone knows that I'm green here. I like green stuff. I, I don't think there's any way to enforce this. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to drink out of paper straws. I remember that. But I just don't think there's any way that we could, I don't think we have a plan in place that we could do this at this time. I wouldn't mind, you know, we're not going to waste staff's time, but maybe as council members, we can maybe do a little research and come up with something more defined that could be enforceable that wouldn't be incredibly costly. Well, uh, I really like the idea of a bottle bill and a hand bill, but that's something the state has to do. That's really a little beyond what we're able to do for you, which was a great incentive program because if you get money back, why not? Um, as far as uh, regulating plastic bags, I think that's really something that the county would have to take a lead in so it would be uniform because you go to one dollar general or one public since one rule, then the next one, it would end up being very confusing for a lot of people. Um, as far as um, private business, forcing them to shift, I think it should be more of a voluntary thing, and if we can come up with some type of incentive or cost-effective program for the businesses to switch over, that would be wonderful to give them that option, because I think most would if they were able to. So if you can find us more information about alternative products that are similarly priced so that there's an incentive for them to switch, um, I think that would go a long way with everyone. But from what I see, um, it doesn't look like... Um, we're willing to move forward with anything at this point, but we would need more information and we'd welcome it. Um, <clears throat> does anyone want to make a motion on this topic? I'll second. So we have a motion to deny moving forward with it at this time, developing an ordinance and a second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. That's five to zero. Which brings us to tab 11, council policy on public input during meetings. I have uh, presented to you an update to the policy on public speaking. Uh, there's been a new um, law that passed for a statute 286.0114 that um, requires uh, boards to um, develop uh, policies for public speaking so that everyone gets an opportunity to speak on every item. Uh, so your policy that was um, uh, done before in 2013 uh, has been uh, replaced with a new policy that I've attached 
for your consideration. The highlights are the three-minute rule remains the same. We're expanding the three-minute rule to five minutes uh, for people who represent other people. Um, we are uh, requiring that if you have a jump drive uh, that you want to present to the public, that it be uh, presented to the uh, staff so that the IT department can look for viruses um, and, and make sure that it doesn't have viruses before it goes into our system, and that that be done um, prior to the meeting. Um, not a lot has changed other than expanding from three to five minutes for people who represent others, making sure the jump drives are presented in a timely manner. Um, with that, uh, policies before you. I think there's some public input on public speaking. Uh, back to you for that process, and I'm here to answer any questions on updating our public speaking policy. Right, we'll move on to public input. We have Mr. St. Torre. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Drury, city staff, Mr. Williams, Gary Santoro, Royal Harbor. I really don't have any heartburn over it, but I have two questions. Number one, so we are not going to require, you're not going to require us to fill out a form to speak on a public comment? You would be required to fill out the form to speak on a public comment. Same as what we've been doing. We really haven't been consistent with that, but that's okay. My next question is, is that you're saying that all these forms have to be turned in before the gavel hits. How's that going to work? Uh, that we've used that as the policy uh, that other cities have used. Basically, when the agenda is posted on Friday, you would have uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to um, review the agenda and decide what item you wanted to speak on, and you can um, fill out your form come here 10 minutes early and put it in that box, or five minutes early and put it in that box, or you can email the clerk uh, any one of those days and tell the clerk when you'd like to speak on the form, or, or on, on what, what issue. So uh, that would be the policy. Uh, we do recognize that um, there are some people that arrive, pick up the agenda, read it while the meeting's going on, and then decide they want to speak on an item. Uh, I think the chairman or the mayor has the flexibility to uh, accept those and the policy has been accepting those even though they come in after the meeting has started. And I understand that and I can respect that and I have no problem with that. I do have a problem having to fill out one of those forms for public speaking. Because sometimes there's things that are said under public comment that somebody, myself included, would want to get up and speak about what somebody has said or what something has happened during a meeting. And you can't do that, you know, if you have to fill out one of those forms. I, I believe that public speaking should be just that. If somebody wants to get up and speak, they raise their hand and be recognized by the chair. Just my opinion. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Santoro. Uh, we'll move on to Ms. Lorana. Rural right Harbor. Obviously, some of the thoughts that Mr. Santora just had are going on right now because you just got more <clears throat> requests to speak up there. Um, John, I'd like to thank you. I know I had uh, talked to you about this issue in the past, and I was very concerned about jump drives being given and possibly infecting the uh, systems of the city. So I appreciate you looking into that and considering it. <clears throat> However, um, I'm opposed to public speakers like myself or someone in the audience bringing in a jump drive and making a PowerPoint presentation to you all for any reason. I just don't think it's necessary. I can understand the necessity when you're having a builder, a developer, a consultant, um, you know, someone that's going to be doing business with the city. Obviously, there's a lot of issues there, and you want to hear and, and possibly see the diagrams and so forth. But other than that, I just think that um, having it uh, submitted by someone like myself before the meeting and then having to have IT check it, um, it is just an expense that the city shouldn't have to undertake. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lorada. Next, I have Mr. Corner. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm probably out of step here. I, the, the new resolution, uh, and I 
guess what I'm opposed to is those who come to speak here to you for whatever the subject, and they don't live here, and they don't vote here, or their subjects are irrelevant, out of touch, or suggestions for how you, t how you should run the council, run the city. Uh, not long ago, there was a long list presented that Mr. Dury took notes on and offered to one of the percent participants that he would answer those requests or those concerns in writing. I would think that that should go on <coughs> the other direction, that some of those long requests and uh, comments and criticisms that you get, that I think are out of bounds, um, should come in, in writing, regardless of the speaking um, coming forward here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corner. Next, I have Ms. Aiden. <coughs> Diana, 18714 North St. Clair Abrams Avenue. Um, with this draft policy that I've read here, I think maybe it could be changed. Um, I am against having to fill out a form for public speaking on audience to be heard. I think when we ask for the audience input, I don't think that that should have to be turned in each time. Sometimes I like to uh, get up and talk a lot. Maybe not so much, but um, I just think having to fill that out beforehand. Sometimes I'm late, um, and I just don't feel like I should have to fill out each time before the gavel hits. It should be at the discretion, I guess, um, at the mayor. Um, one thing I'd like to see changed. Um, I know that you know we got to turn in our form that has our name and address and information on it, but. <coughs> Sometimes I have questions during some of the tab items that I may not have turned in at the time. And I remember when Robert Wolf sat on the council, how he always called upon the people that had filled out a sheet to be spoken to. Um, and then he would also ask if there was anybody else in the audience that had wanted to speak on it. Now. I think that would be a nice procedure to do. Even though you don't have one, I'm, I may have a question that I did not have before that I may or present an idea or a comment. Um, that may be one way to rewrite it um, as a procedure. Um, it, I came in late. As far as the three minutes per person, I think if we're going to have it three minutes, even for a person or group, I think it should be the same across the board with you're getting three or five. Everybody should have that equal opportunity with it. There's I can come up here and say I'm speaking for a group and get that extra time in. Um, as far as um, the timekeeper, I don't know. Does that state that you would have to be the timekeeper? <coughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I like that. Because I was wondering how you're going to pay attention and get all the attentions if you're having to keep time also. Oh my gosh. Okay, my time is up. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, and I agree with Denise about the IT on um, being presented at the last minute, some of the public comment on PowerPoint. I think that that needs to go away. Um, that it should be strictly to like our developers or something that's on the agenda, that if it's presented beforehand, the cost involved in that, I agree on that. And, um, but we need our public comment. As a resident, I want to be heard, and sometimes I don't feel like I always have the opportunity. And sometimes when I get back to the seat, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Like um, the city and the recycle, the recycle bins. I mean, we're adults here, and if we have plastic, we should dispose of those past plastics properly. But we didn't say on topic here. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much, and hopefully we can maybe draft this and make some changes on that and bring it to a vote at a later time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eaton. I believe, I believe, uh, Mr. Sergeant? Yeah. David, I'll report to you that I'm at many kinds of meetings, and uh, most of them have a public comment card. Uh, I think the only one that doesn't is Lady Lake. And uh, I want you to know, I think it's a good idea, you know, who's going to speak. Uh, look, you know, people think about you still hand a, a, a public comment card to your clerk to bring it to you. That's well accepted. 
Uh, there's a three-minute timer that some uh, offices have, and the bell goes off, and it, you know, you either let the person keep speaking or you stop them right there. Uh, in Orlando, uh, a county, they have a three-minute timer, but they have a three-minute timer in uses, I believe, also. And uh, there's public comment cards at all these offices except for Lady Lake. Uh, I'm at Lake County Commission's meeting, and they have a public comment card you turn in. You know, it's just common sense. You get to know what the people are speaking about, what agenda they're talking on. Um, and that gives you an idea of what's, what you're going to be fronted on. Um, the only city I know of that does it is Lady Lake, and I've been to Wildwood, Lady Lake, Fruitland Park, uh, Leesburg, Tavares, Mount Dora, Eustis, Orange County, Lake County, Suffolk County, they all have a public comment card. You know, it only makes sense. One city, Lady Lake, does it. You know, and my God, <laughs> just to let you know, the whole restaurants are going green following what that uh, the counties are doing. So, you know, they're go doing it down there. You know, people don't like it, but the restaurants are following it. Like even in uh, through the park, there's people that are, you know, restaurants that are banned plastic straws. You know, I, I, I know that's off the title, but I wanted you to know, they're, even the restaurants are following um, going green, what the cities are doing down in Orlando, they, you know, they're very progressive. They got bicycle taking their back. So we have like to stay that. on topic. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, so that brings us to Mr. Yeah. Newman. Yeah. Yes, Yoakum. Uh, you know, there are a lot of apps you can get, and you can get an 8 inch uh, tablet, and you can put them on it, and you can set it right up there, and you can see the countdown. This one, I started at 3 minutes and 30 seconds because I figure I'm going for 5. I'm speaking for all the rest of the people that can't speak here today. So you have 3 minutes, so use them wisely. <laughs> all right, use them wisely. Uh, the, I think you ought to, I agree with Diana. I think you ought to put her in charge of public input and uh, controlling the timer. Um, the one question I have, which wasn't clear, is it kept saying you can submit uh, either PowerPoint or other things, but it didn't say can you do that by email. Uh, and I would think that that would make sense if you are going to have that requirement. Secondly, is that if you're going to have a PC and you're talking about oh the IT department has to check this and everything else, you just get a separate cheap laptop and you just have it connected. It's, it's firewalled off from everything else. It would probably be helpful to be connected to the internet in case somebody wants to show you a website, but I think that makes sense. You can get these laptops, Chromebook or something like that for very uh, low cost and just dedicate that to this and put it up here. There are some like the county, they, that's what they do. you got a laptop right there in front of you. Um, the uh, it said something about the papers presented during the discussion. Like if I have a handout, I have to give it to her like several hours earlier or days earlier. Uh, I disagree with that. I think that I should be able to come in if I have a, a handout or something that I want to be handed out. I bring it in and I give it to the staff and they pass it around. Um, and by the way, I was at Mascot last night, and uh, they have five minutes. Is there? Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Get a cheap tablet, use that with a timer on it. <coughs> Have a cheap Chromebook or something like that that you can use that isn't hardwired into your internet. I mean, into your into your network, so that you don't have to worry about viruses. And, and leave it at that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Yoakum. I believe that concludes our public input. So I will close public comment and we want to cancel. Cancel. Does anyone have any comments or questions they'd like to kick off with? Yeah. Mr. Stevenson. Um, okay, just uh, just to get things started, uh, it's shocking for me to sit up here and listen to the um, leader of the fiscal rangers ask the city to spend money on a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap laptops. <laughs> But I do think that he brings up a very good point. One of the things that I see as a real problem here is when we start talking about groups get five minutes because you're going to have someone come in here, if you guys can think of anyone, and say come in with their wife, declare themselves to be a group, 
whether that's successful or not. At some point, they're going to succeed, whether they have two, three, four, five, six, whatever that number winds up being. And then the person who's here with two, and they didn't get to get the five minutes as a group, but the person with three got to get the five minutes. So I think if we're going to like talk about the work group, I think we should define the work group and say, like, in order for you to qualify as a group, you have to have this minimum number of people or something. Or, you know, he was trying to make a joke, but he brings up, I think, a valid point. Everybody's going to try to be a group on some esoteric level, if not on an actual physical level, by bringing folks here just for that purpose. I doubt it would not shock me to see people do that. Uh, when it comes to the forms, I think we've always had this, like, policy. As long as I've been here, we've always. Uh, Mr. Singer and, and now uh, Ms. Foggis, they let folks come up pretty much whenever they want to come up. You know, folks bring it up while we're talking or, or while it's being presented and such. So I don't see any reason if that's what we're going to do, let the public know. I'm all about people being able to give their input. I, I don't think we're in this alone. I think we're just merely five people that have been selected to represent everyone, all of our neighbors. I want to hear from my neighbors. I expect, and not only do I want, but I expect folks to help me make these decisions. So I want to hear as much as possible. So anything that would be accommodating in that regard, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I think if you look under procedures and rules, point number two says for items on the agenda, Mr. Centora, uh, for items on the agenda, and then it says accept the audience to be heard agenda item, then you have to, all those requirements of turning in a form and all that. Not a big fan of it having to be turned in by the click of the gavel and all that. I'm with you on that. But I think that anyone can come up to an audience to be heard. I don't think you're restricted from doing that in other forms. And as a matter of procedure, I don't think we've ever stopped. I've never seen anyone be stopped from talking. I've seen someone be stopped from going 12 minutes uh, while they were talking. Uh, when it comes to the PowerPoints, I, I, again, I was looking through it. Uh, on the final page of it, it says vis visuals such as PowerPoint presentations. There probably should be a comma after that, but are limited to three minutes. I don't think anyone's saying that you can't send an email in uh, to, to suffer the same scrutiny that, uh, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you call this? Uh, thumb drive. I think it would suffer the same fate as a thumb drive. So, uh, real quick, all four people being able to give as much input as possible. I'm not a big fan of if you haven't done it by the time the gavel clicks. I've never seen that work out in reality in here. I think anyone should be able to talk during the um, audience to be heard part. I'm okay with PowerPoints even if it's by email. Uh, and then that's funny that uh, he would ask us to buy a laptop. The one person I would never expect to hear that from. I'll give Anybody you a Council wants to speak on this topic? My only concern is the five minutes, as Roy said. A, a group, defining what a group is, is important. I think if you don't, can't get your point across in three minutes on the topic, then you may as well not, not use the three minutes. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the five minutes. Um, you know, that just brings up more issues, so I would like to see it you know, remain just the three for everybody involved. Um, I do like uh, the comments Mr. Kern brought up. I don't know if we could ever implement that, but. You, uh, like what he said. Um, and then, you know, this isn't the only time that you communicate with uh, council members. We're all accessible. I mean, we got phone numbers, uh, so, uh, email. You can always contact us anytime. I know, uh, you know, I pride myself on answering everybody's uh, emails and phone calls, so I'm always open for any uh, conversation anybody would like to have. Uh, that's really all I have there. Vice Mayor Well, yeah. Um I guess I've been here too long because this has always worked fine and suddenly we've been having all these changes and I'm trying to understand them because these meetings to me have always run so smoothly. Um, as far as the group, well, I'm all about timeliness. I, I like to save time. So if two people want to come in here and consider them a group, well, we just save one minute. Let them speak for five because if both of them spoke, that's six. So, We've saved a minute there. As far as PowerPoint, if a developer can come in and, and show us all these pretty pictures of what they like to do, I think the residents have a right to come in and show us what they would like to show us. I think that should be their right because a, a developer isn't going to show you the pictures of maybe 
what he is going to destroy that's already there. And I think the homeowners or the people who live by something that's possibly being developed, I think they should have the opportunity to come in here and show. So if we have to buy a laptop, as Mr. Yoakum suggested, I would say that's what we need to do because I think they should have, they should be given that right also. This is their home, this is where they live, and, and I'm going to respect that as much as I'm going to respect the developer who comes in. So I think they should be given equal, equal time there. Um, as far as at the end, I, I, we've always had the people fill out, well not initially, but a few years into being on the council, people had to come in and they had to fill out what they'd like to speak on. And sometimes you don't know you want to speak until someone says something that you don't like, or maybe the council says something and they're going in a direction that you never imagined they'd go in, and now you want to speak on that item. So I don't like it having to be done before the gavel. And then at the end, for public input, it's just what it is, audience to be heard. I don't think you should have to fill out anything to be audience to be heard. So I'm not <coughs> sure where all these changes are coming from, if, if this is coming down from the state of Florida, or if someone's just bored and decided we need to do something different. I just don't know, but we've run pretty darn smoothly here. Every once in a while you get someone who doesn't want to stay within the guidelines, and you just sit them down, you know, respectfully and say your time's up and we move on to the next one. So there's a lot of hoopty do over not a whole lot to me. <laughs> All right. Well, <clears throat> my opinion is the uh, same as most people, that what is a group, we should probably define that to make it clear to the public. Um, and additionally, as far as PowerPoints or any other technological presentations, I think that developers and private business should be treated the same as public and everyone held to the same deadline. Uh, I do know that IT staff does need to review all that before they connect it to the network using city uh, computers. So unless someone can provide their computer and hook into a public access Wi-Fi, they can't get to, which I don't understand how to do that. And we can't even get that to work all the time correctly. So that would be something that I would have to follow through with IT to see what is even feasible with the equipment we have and the Wi-Fi network we have set up. So I'd like to get more feedback from IT before we make any decisions holding their feet to the fire. Um, and as far as I can tell with the draft policy, um, item 2 says that you do not need to fill out anything for audience to be heard. It's all other items on the agenda. I believe is that correct? Right. All right. So, uh, that note, um, would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, either accepting the policy as stated or suggesting changes for the council to uh, city to look into? Can I make a couple of comments? Um, you know what? The, the council currently has a policy that uh, has most of this in it was adopted in 2013. Uh, there was a state statute that came out and changed things for the state of Florida. And uh, so cities have spent the last two years trying to comply with that law, uh, which gives everyone an opportunity to speak on an item that's before this board. One of the goals is to have a judicious orderly meeting. Uh, you are the representative of the people, you're doing the people's business. And you have to remember that sometimes you'll have 150, 200, 300 people out here. So raising your hands and you know picking people to come up. Sometimes you'll have 30 people. Sometimes you'll have 200 people. So we have to uh, we're developing a policy. We're updating the current policy so that you can run an orderly meeting in all sorts of different scenarios. Um, this wasn't just created from nowhere. We researched 20 cities, three counties, picked what we thought was good, got rid of what we didn't think was good, watered it down where we thought it would be more appropriate, and all of that. So work went into it, just so you know, and other cities are doing this for a very good reason, so that your meetings are run in an orderly way, and you can go through it. And I think as the council member, Roy Fister, said, the last 12 years, it's worked pretty good. So, and that's the way we've been working. Um, the issue of five minute, three minute rule, uh, I, I hear what you're saying there. I think limiting it to three minutes is the easiest thing to do and would work just fine. 
the chairman has the ability to give people more time. When you're performing, your, uh, when you're rehearsing and getting ready to present for this council, maybe everybody should plan on around three minutes because the policy says that, but it gives the chairman flexibility and certainly council members can ask questions. Uh, that's not taken away from the three minutes. You ask a question, they answer a question. So uh, determining and defining what is a group and what's not a group, practically impossible. Uh, that would be very impossible to do. Uh, there's people that come here and say, I represent all the people in the Shirley Shores area. And then you find out, well, you really don't. There's some people that actually you're not representing, or you are. So figuring all that would be kind of a, 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 impossible to do. Um, so coming up with just three minutes for everybody and then giving the chair flexibility uh, makes all um, that issue as well. One of the issues we've had is people come up and want to bring things up on the screen that maybe are not age appropriate. Uh, we do have children here um, and nobody's ever seen it. And up it goes and we've had no ability to review it. Um, it's happened in other cities uh, and some would argue it's happened here. Uh, so allowing anybody in the public to just come up with a laptop, put up whatever they want and then us having to go and decide whether it's appropriate or inappropriate um, I've had people put donkeys up there, I want to put donkeys up there two meetings ago. I've had people who put people that aren't fully clothed up there um, not too long ago. Uh, so I think in order to run a judicious meeting that's G-rated, uh, that is on topic, um, we would want to have some reasonable rules uh, so that you don't find yourself in an embarrassing situation on the internet or whatever on what happened and why it, why it happened and what could have been done to prevent that. So that's one of the reasons many cities have cre uh, created a set of policies where uh, those things that you look at. Malware is huge, it's going all over the place, uh, look it up, Naples just got hit with it, lost $100,000, getting infected, having people from foreign countries going to someone's computer, going to someone's computer and then off, we, off, off, off it goes and real estate offices, governments are losing a lot of money and if you look it up and you research it, it's billions of dollars. We have to protect the people's money. We have to protect that from ever occurring here. Uh, so we, we, this policy does that. You know, it, it protects the, uh, the city from, from that as well. Uh, forms and no forms, uh, you know, that's a good, good uh, question. Uh, we've had forms to uh, have a process for people to think about what they want to speak on, how they want to speak on it, and get it to, to the board. 200 people are out there, and their all hands are up there, the chairman's trying to pick which person's speaking next, and you know, the meetings are going to go along as you determine who's got their hand and which one you're picking up. Uh, having a form filled out, the gentleman said, just about everybody city does that. It helps you do the people's business in a um, respectful and decent way while giving the public an opportunity to have public input while protecting uh, the council from having inappropriate things go up on screens or malware go into our uh, software. I believe you have a policy that's before you that needs one tweak from three minutes, from five minutes to three minutes for everybody. Uh, continue to give the chairman the opportunity to extend that. Um, I also think there's flexibility that people don't fill out the form in a timely manner, the chairman can uh, recognize a person uh, or two or three or five or fifty or a hundred and let them speak. You have that ability in this current policy to do both those things that concern you. Uh, so those are my comments as you deliberate which way you want to go on this item. Thank you. Yeah, I just want this over with. So I'll make a motion that, um, I'm sorry, um, I'll make a motion that we follow this, but make it be three minutes across the board and leave it. The mayor has discretion to run the meeting as they feel accordingly. And that you can present, you can present something, but it has to be presented ahead of time if you want to do something where it can be checked out before it is put up on our screen. That's what I'd like the motion to. So you could have a PowerPoint, but you're going to have to have it in here soon enough so someone can check it. Okay. 
I believe we have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? Yeah. Do the day of the meeting is that time? Yes. Yeah, that's it. I'm due to the day of the meeting. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five to zero. Moving on to tab number 12, uh, Lake County Folk Festival. That's with community services. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, I have exciting news, I believe. Uh, city staff was approached uh, several months ago from members of the uh, Public Arts and Music Board, or PAM, I will refer to them as PAM, the rest of this delivery. Um, uh, requesting that the city consider being the host site. Can you hear me okay? I feel like I, said, I can hear you, but I don't know if they're able to hear you. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm very loud. Okay, thank you. Um, that the city, better, thank you, Mike. That the city consider serving as the host site for the annual uh, folk festival, the Lake County Folk Festival, which has been held in the city of Houston for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they've outgrown the, the boundaries of that city, and they're looking for a bigger venue. Um, and they're actually looking for a partnership, kind of a unique hybrid partnership, I would call it, um, whereby at the city we organize events, city staff. Um, there are outside organizers who organize events and come to the city and host their events here. In this particular instance, um, the group is here, by the way, um, the city staff would work in tandem with the board and in a, in a beautiful partnership. Um, I've outlined some highlights of their request and um, what we would do in terms of funding the event, the, the arts and cultural program here at the city. I have a line item budget for that, as you know. Um, it would be funded through that line item budget. Typically, every year, I do a variety of things with that budget. I host uh, art of being receptions and exhibits. Uh, I work at the African American Heritage Festival and we do a kickoff a cultural event the night before the festival. Um, so we do a variety of things. We did the Beatles event uh, through the Arts and Cultural Budget. So in the next uh, fiscal year, uh, this, sorry, excuse me, this current fiscal year, we would host the event from that budget. Um, and uh, additionally, the, the group has a few funding sources too. So uh, that's, that's what we would propose. We, we, preemptively met before meeting you tonight uh, to sort of brainstorm a little bit and certainly the decision is ultimately yours uh, whether or not this partnership proceeds um, but uh, we are an entertainment district so it certainly makes sense to bring uh, another layer of, of entertainment and culture to our downtown uh, we have uh, we picked the date of October 3rd, 2020. Uh, the event itself, musicians would be brought in from all over the state of Florida, and they would be performing in a variety of locations in the downtown to include in the restaurants. Those participating restaurants who would like to have musicians in the restaurant for the day, performing throughout the day. They would, they would be in this gazebo, they would be across the street in the square, they would be in the park, and just peppered throughout the town so if you can visualize how that would look and feel. Uh, we would bring in a visual um, art component as well. So we would have a folk art exhibit in City Hall. We would have artists painting and working. They might be across the street in the square. They might be on the veranda in front of City Hall. So it's just layers and layers of art, all kinds of art, visual and uh, performing art. Uh, the festival would retain its name because we're the county seat. So it would be, continue to be called the Lake County Folk Festival, which, would, which made sense to us. Uh, the PAM group would continue to sell their uh, branded shirt. They sell it every year as part of the event, and everyone, they buy that, that new shirt every year. Um, community Development Director Mike, Fitz Mike Fitzgerald, if you don't know this, is an accomplished musician as well as our attorney. And Michael is well versed in um, uh, different genres of music and folk art, and, uh, folk uh, music, and he would serve as on uh, the selection committee as well. So he would be. Um, advising and selecting along with the, uh, the group. So it would just be everyone kind of working together in this beautiful sort of partnership. Um, so that's essentially it. What, we're, what I'm seeking tonight is for your consideration of such a partnership. It is entirely up to you. Uh, we are recommending that you discuss it and you advise us in which direction you'd like us to take. And certainly uh, the board members would be happy to hop up to the podium and answer any of your questions that you might have.
Tamara, wonderful idea. It's, it's excellent. My concern was where the 9,000 were coming from because I couldn't put my finger on that item. Thank you for the clarification. And I'm glad you're maintaining the square. That's very important, as Denise mentioned. Um, my question is, will Rocktoberfest not happen because that's typically the first Saturday in October? Are we doing away with Rocktoberfest? Not at all. They will be the second Saturday. October is a very busy month. Yes. October 3rd would be folk. October... 10th, I believe, Bob, is Rocktoberfest. I think that's what Sherry told me. And October 30th is Boo. Wonderful. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Tavares. Yeah, that was one of my concerns as well with the uh, the funding. I just want to make sure we were still going to be able to do the events that we were able to do in the past. So that's great. I like the idea. Um, you know, it's bringing a, a varied group to our downtown area. I think, uh, you know, I'm all about partnerships. I, I think it's great, you know, especially when we can get uh, you know different people involved. I do have one question for the group. Um, I see that you were in Eustis for 22 years. So, what made you decide to come to America's Seaplane City? We like to be we like to be in some of the the venues, be in some of the restaurants and stuff. And the city of Eustis no longer has the restaurants to be in. Um, just to give you an example, two weeks before the festival, 1884 closed. Now, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. um, we've had that type of situation several years in a row. It's very frustrating and, and very upsetting. So we were looking for an area that has a lot of venues we can use. It's not like we have trouble getting performers, getting people here to see it. We have problems with venues. And here there's a lot of restaurants that have music already in them. They're already set up for music. And if we could have a couple of, one of the things we didn't talk about was we have uh, jam tents, which are very popular. And people come and sit. They don't have to be musicians. They can come, put up a tent out there on the lawn, and you'll have 40, 50 people there having a jam. And it's such an interesting experience. So that's why we have to move out of Eustis, because there is no venues for us. That answer. Yes, it does. Thank you. It sounds like a, a wonderful fit. So, thank you very much for considering Tavares. I appreciate it. So. Um, Mr. Stevenson? Mr. Rogers, you know, we have a balanced budget, right? Budgets, what you take in, what you spend. If you're taking $9,000 and shifting it over here, we have to do something, right? Like, aren't we going to lose? I, I'm curious what we're going to lose because I don't want to lose anything. And, and I love that you're interested and concerned. As What I did this past year, we had the Beatles event. So I put a large portion of the arts and culture budget toward kind of an event that attracted, I don't know, there's a couple thousand people here. So that big, we won't do a Beatles this time. We will do this instead. So kind of do visual art here every quarter, or is that right, every three months. Uh, support this event and then one big, big thing. Big. So that's how I've always broken it down. Um, a couple of years ago, right after the hurricane, we did uh, the Ultimate Art Project, and that was across the street in the square, excuse me, layers and layers of art. So that was my, what do I want to say, the big part of my year was creating that event. So instead of those two things, it would that money would be earmarked toward this particular arts and cultural event. Thank you, ma'am. That was a great answer. I saw on the uh, tabulated list that was provided to me, a paper copy of the agenda, uh, there's right in the middle part it says we're going to spend about $9,000 on this for arts and musicians, artists and musicians. But then down below it also says that we'll have to support it logistically with trash cans and portlets. Is that in addition to that nine grand or is oh, that yeah. included? It, because it's, it's, it's halfway in between a city event and an outside organizer event. So we are sponsoring, hosting, I hope I'm probably using the wrong words, but we are part of coordinating the event. So it's almost like the city is putting the event on with support from PAM because they no longer wish to organize and manage the event. So they've asked us to not only be the host site, where it's physically here, but we're managing the event and they will be supporting us. So it essentially has become our event, will become our event if you say yes. Okay, I think it's cool. The $9,000, is that going to like artists and musicians? And then in addition to that, we're also going to spend a bunch of money on portalettes, having them brought in and taken away and all that? The answer is yes. That money 
is provided annually by um, waste management. So they provide up to how much money? A year? Yeah, more like 25000 So uh, waste management allocates around 25000 to support us with portlets coming and going for events throughout the year. Is that going to mess us up if we start spending additional money on this event? Is that going to mess us up for money that you don't, you know, because everything's like set up, yeah. exactly where it comes from, exactly where it goes? I think every year we have a little surplus at the end, right? So I think we're going to be fine on this one. We will okay. watch it carefully. You know, we, some years we have just a little less portalettes for an event, some years a little bit more, but I don't think we've ever run out of our allocation of one year we did. One year we did. Yeah, so we watch it, we manage it to make sure the number of portalettes we have for the number of events are sufficient. Sometimes we hit it, sometimes we miss it. That was all the questions I had. Thank you for Yes, and I love this event. I go every year. I've gone forever. I love it. So I, I, when I heard that y'all were, you know, inquiring on coming here, I was excited about it. Um, I'll just talk about $9,000. Isn't that going to be in the next year's fiscal budget? It's not even in this year's. And, and it's a very good observation. You know, you know here's what happens. Because you have to start entering into contracts yep. this fiscal year, that money will be in this fiscal year, even though the event, I guess this is okay, takes place the next Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand okay, three days in. I just, but there's a it's way that we can, yeah. we can swing the money here and there. Okay, yeah, that's really all I had to say. Welcome to Tavares. And all I have to say is I was really tempted to wear my full festival t-shirt today. <laughs> but I didn't because I thought I needed to be formal since it's my first full meeting as mayor. So uh, if anybody would like to have a motion, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second it. And the motion's to approve. Yes. yes. Approve. <laughs> all right, we have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five to zero. Thank you. Welcome to Tavares. <laughs> brings us to tab 13, amendment to extend current waste disposal agreement with Covanta Lake 2, Public Works. Thank you, Mayor. On January 31st, 2014, the City of Tiberias entered into an agreement with Covanta to provide location for residential waste disposal services with an expiration date of September 30th, 2019. Tip fees for the first year were 32 50 per ton for the disposal portion of the municipal collection operation. In addition, a renewable energy credit a $5 per ton was applied, resulting in a net charge of $27.50 per ton. Per the original contract, each subsequent year would have an annual percentage increase based on the consumer price in it. If any, not to exceed 2.5% per contract year. The record would also have an annual percentage increase based on the CCI increase, if any, with a maximum of 2.5% per contract year. Staff has negotiated an extension to the contract. This proposed extension amends the original agreement by extending the contract an additional five years for an additional uh, for an expiration date of September 30th, 2024. It also reduces the tip fee from 35 89 per ton down to 34 50 per ton. The rec fee will remain the same at five dollars as depicted in the A. Okay. The annual uh, CPI remains the same up to a maximum of 2.5% per contract year. No change to the customer's annual fee uh, structure is proposed. Previously, the council adopted an ordinance setting the fee structure to the CPI as well. <laughs> CPI increases offset the increased cost of fuel, capital outlay, personnel, resulting in a fiscally balanced business enterprise. You have two options before you, to accept the amendment or not to accept. Staff recommends to accept. I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, well, we do have public input from Mr. Serdar. And please. You know, I'm bad, but this is right up my alley. I'm just a custodian uh, that certified water damage, uh, carpet cleaning certified, uh, for over a decade. Um, uh, waste paper, you know, I told it only trash litters. Uh, please put it up in your, your public works department. And by God, I met the new public works uh, director in Orlando, uh, he doesn't have a card yet, but I got his picture, and uh, he'd like to know you. I told him I'd go at the Public Works in uh, 
Maybe you ate a, a CT or PT and in uh, Leesburg, another DC, and uh, I've been out to, well, I've been to your office. And, uh, you know, waste. You got to do it right. You got to work with a company that does it right. And, uh, you know, if you're satisfied with the one you got, you stick with them. If they have to go up a little bit in price, hey, things get tough. You, you get a bit, I've been a businessman. Shared Art Services, Incorporated. One call does it all. I work 24 hours a day, and I learned you got to put 23 and a half hours, otherwise they expect you to be at every time. Um, you know, I, I was in business for over 25 years, and uh, then I turned to my wife, who had uh, two bulls, Blackhawks, and two summer jobs. I've been a Florida for many years. Mr. Chair, do you have anything in particular you want to speak on as to what we're voting on today? Well, I say stay with a company that does a service for it. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. I believe that it closed our public comment unless anybody else is interested. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close public comment and take it to uh, council. Anybody have any questions or comments? I guess my comment is, Mr. Dillon, is this a good deal? It is. All right. <laughs> like a motion we approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five to zero. That moves us on to tab 14, uh, resolution 2019-09, fiscal sustainability plan for CRA stormwater approval project, utilities, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mayor. The subject title is resolution 2019-09, fiscal sustainability plan for CRA stormwater improvement project. The objective is to consider the approval of the fiscal sustainability plan and a resolution 2019-09 for the downtown CRA stormwater improvement project. Previously, the council approved all the business that needed to go into place to do the uh, Eco Park Ruby Street project. We got loans and grants in order to fulfill the requirements of the grants. We have to have a sustainability plan in place. We have one written. We have a resolution written. You can approve it or not approve it. I rec staff recommends that you approve it. There's no fiscal impact associated with the approval, and our lawyer has asked for you. If you have any questions, I'll be back. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I did not receive any audience uh, input forms, so Mr. Sardar, if you're going to speak on it, you have to stay on topic. You can't talk about how you like water in each of us. So please take your name and... David Sardar, 66 Winter Green Drive, from the Park Floor. Waste water, I picked up my alley. I'm certified in water damage. I know what gray water is. And, uh, you know, I believe anything in particular in the Well, I'll let you know. I'm such a concerned citizen that, uh, you know, I've asked to be on a water management district board appointed by the governor, and they sent me a literature already. We've got a bolder, brighter, better future for us, uh, 46 governor and governor of status. And I want you to know, you know, I, it's right up my alley. We have to take care of wastewater. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Sigar. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close public comments. I'll make a motion we approve. Sorry. Anybody have any further comments or discussion other than I really like the plan? It looks like we're in great shape. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Five to zero. Moving on to new business. I don't believe we have any new business for what it looks like, so old business. I don't see anyone full of business. Moving on to Ms. Burley with a historical perspective. Ms. Burley, can you put the microphone closer to you so we can hear you? You're so soft-spoken. In 1990, 6,000 lights <coughs> plus will go on during light-up to Aries. Approximately 6,000 sparkling lights in the trees at Wood Park, plus lights on Main Street will be turned on during the light-up to Aries celebration, December 6th at 5.30 p.m. in the park. Mayor Eugene Glenn will serve as Master of Ceremonies for the program, which is scheduled to include members of the Tiberius High School Band and several choirs. Refreshments of punch and cookies will be served by the Junior Women's Club. 
it was the Azalea Garden Club two years ago initiated the campaign for holiday lighting to berries. This group and the Chamber of Commerce coordinated fundraising efforts for the lights prior to last year's first light up of DeBerry's. Last year, Mrs. Bacchus headed a campaign that resulted in 18 decorated Christmas trees in the downtown <laughs> business district. Uh, Mrs. Bacchus hopes that soon after the first of the year, plans can begin for the next year's light up fund drive. If funds are raised earlier and explains the City Parks and Recreation Department, which puts up the lights and arranges the annual Lights Up celebration, will have more time to plan and purchase and put up the lights. This year's fund drive brought contributions of approximately $1,000, with $300 from the Azalea Garden Club, $150 from the Tiberius Women's Club, $100 from the Tiberius Recreation Association, and $100 from the Lioness Club, and $100 from the Fox Run homeowners. Thank you, Ms. Burley. So that brings us to audience to be heard. Once again, Mr. Sirdar, you're up. Do you want to? I'm going to pass on this Thank you. It's all right. Thank you. Please, let's not. Thank you. Uh, moving on to Ms. Aiden. North St. Clair Abrams Avenue. Um, am I correct that because of the approval that I don't have to fill out for audience to be heard, or do I? I do not. Okay. Just want to make sure I've put it in the next. I just want to say thank you again. Um, great job. Um, there needs to be a correct spelling of St. Clair Abrams um, in our minutes. I noticed the second time in a row C L A I R not the E on it, um, and that um, I subscribe to text updates with the city. Any updates on job postings, um, events, important um, notifications for any disaster um, storm related. When you guys mentioned about the board um, and not having enough, or not having turn-ins to be a board appointed. Um, I didn't get any updates. And I don't know if that is included in your updates when you, you need a position within the city on boards, but I did not get any updates. I went through my updates and I did not see any. Um, maybe we can get a better response from the community if we have those updates available via text when something is needed. Um, not quite sure. Yeah, Bob's already gone, and I would have to leave that with Mr. Drury to respond to you. Okay. Sure, if you would like to do it after the meeting. Then. Okay, that'd be fine. Yeah. We'll look into that. Okay, I, it would just be nice if maybe I can serve somehow. Um, but I just want to say thank you, Mayor Bogus. Great job on your first meeting held as mayor officially. Great job. And congratulations, and thanks again. And um, that's all I have to say. And have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Amy. And last but surely not least, Mr. Buck. And um, listen closely, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Excuse me, I I had trouble cancer, so it's hot. You know, just staying out so I'm from Maine. So I got a different answer. I, I was going to lose weight, so I started walking. I walked down the Eagle Park, I got eight on the Park, and up Main Street, and then back down the other side. I've done this for three weeks. I have picked up, just on Main Street, 18 pails of trash. I've picked it out of the shrubbery along the sidewalk. I've, uh, I picked up, I asked, I went to, uh, I called the town garage. And I asked them if they could please pick up the pot. The Egyptological pot. 
this. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why they don't know evidence. <laughs>
all the decorations that you do, and your first day of marriage. Am I allowed to? I don't agree, but these buds are for you. I'll see you at the end of the meeting. <laughs> all right. Um, anyone else draw names to be heard? All right. Well, I'm going to close audience to be heard and move on to reports. Um, Chair 16, City Administrator. Thank you. Um, just good public input. Uh, we're listening. We're hearing you. We're taking notes. Uh, and know that uh, when we hear you, it is being distributed to our staff uh, and to the people that are, you know are out, um, you know, from picking up trash to lights and everything. So the public input is welcomed. We need that. We get focused on what we're doing. And uh, we need your public input so that we can direct our limited resources to where they need to be. So thank you for that. Uh, the only other thing uh, I guess I'd like to offer or think about, or have you all think about, and I was going to wait till next budget year when uh, we talk about the budget, which will be in February. Uh, but Christmas is here, uh, and there's a parade coming on Saturday. And the square is going to be full with interesting things. Thank you, Tamara, for doing that. And one of the things that uh, I'm hopeful that you will um, discuss during the next budget cycle is uh, a Christmas village uh, being there for the three weeks after the parade starts. And um, the reason I'm bringing this up today for you to think about is to very surprise itself of being creative and um, innovative uh, and proactive and uh, as you think of that square and you see the square um, during the parade that uh, Tamara is leading us with this Saturday uh, and you think what would it look like to have a small craft fair there the big tree Christmas music the big man there a couple of uh, maybe Thursday maybe Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, and uh, you know, 10 tents on one side, 10 tents on the other side, food on one side, might be hot chocolate or might be uh, um, uh, craft vendors. And you had it there every weekend for three weeks and we created a Christmas village in our downtown in that square. One of the things that's been, uh, I've been challenged to think about and I'm asking all you to think about is what would be the centerpiece? What would be in the middle of that square? And, you, know, you think about, well, would you put a skating rink in there? Too expensive, too much, not niche and wow. What would a bonfire look like? You know, every uh, every day people come and roast the marshmallows. Oh, it takes kids running around, getting hurt. Someone's got to manage it. So I'm challenging each of you to think about if a Christmas village is something that this community would want to have uh, during uh, the three weeks after the parade is launched in the square and you were challenged with a centerpiece that people would want to come down to, what would that centerpiece be? Uh, and when you think of that, would it be something that was niche, wow, creative, unique, manageable, not too expensive? So I'm leaving you with that. Uh, the reason I'm doing it now is you, Christmas is around the corner, the event is coming up, and as you go out there, it might get your creative juices thinking. All of you are creative. Uh, I know each and every one of you, uh, you you've, you've come up with some creative ideas, and I'm challenging you to come up with that, should that be something we do next year. That's all I have. Ms. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Chief? Mr. O'Keefe? Mr. Tweedy? Yes, I just have a brief update for council on the uh, seaplane base marina project. Uh, as you recall, last month, the, the council approved a contract for council, our design bill firm, for the, um, uh, the removal of pilot space for this project. We have executed that contract, and a notice of procedure has been issued for the 6th of January. So uh, in the new year, they'll uh, begin that process. We uh, will be receiving their guaranteed maximum price. They have completed the first phase of the project, which is the design and engineering. They have received bids from all their contractors for the construction phase. We'll be receiving that. Mr. Curry and I will be meeting with them on Friday. And we anticipate, subject to the insurance carrier review and approval uh, in, the, in the coming week, uh, bringing that to council next week for approval and, and award of the construction phase of the contract. Uh, and, Getting the work. So, coming into, into the new year, that, uh, that project will be in full swing and the equipment will be moving and, and uh, the build will be on. So, Not next week, but in two weeks. Next week. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Dillon? Nothing to report. Thank you. Ms. Piblitz? Mr. 
Ms. Rogers? Yes, I'm going to state the obvious. Um, and Amanda, you did a great job. That's for sure. But, you know, this Saturday, as John had mentioned, um, we are testing the waters on that little village he dreams of. Uh, there will be eight uh, little playhouses built in the middle of the square by Habitat for Humanity and their sponsorship teams. Um, so they picked us this year. I'm so tickled to have them. We're bringing in a snow machine and a vendor is doing cocoa and we've got market lights to create a little feeling of walkabout village. Very tiny, but, um, and the parade, I have to tell you, I don't know what's happened, but it has exploded. We have 180 units, over 200 vehicles. Wow. I don't know how many walkers. It's the biggest parade we've ever had. They are coming out of the woodwork, wanting to participate. It is a good feeling, guys. We are all psyched. Scott Aldridge, Scott, stand up. He's the superhero. He's uh, doing this whole event. All of hard work and details, and he is not riled at all. Like, he's cool, hand Luke. So anyway, hope to see everybody there. Thank you very much, and thank you to Council for your participation as well. Ms. Houghton, uh, she says she doesn't have a voice and she has nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fitzgerald. All right. Um, his voice. Kirby used to end the meeting with a day of, what was the, you know, was it ice cream day or beer day or what have you. I think um, I'll be doing a positive quote at the end of every meeting. Uh, today's positive quote is, be mindful, be grateful, be positive, be true, and be kind. And that uh, quote is from Roy T. Bennett. Thank you. Mr. Singer? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the parade. It's great to hear that we have all those participants. Uh, very exciting. Uh, the only thing I had to report, I just want to say uh, you know, thank you to the to various high school choir for uh, coming in this afternoon. Uh, did a wonderful job. And if that doesn't put you in the Christmas spirit, then I don't know what will. That's all I have there. Mr. Stevenson? Uh, real quick, man, I, I didn't catch whether it was Buck or Beck, but Mr. Buck. 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 Yeah, sure. All right, Uncle Buck. Yeah. Sir, number one, I noticed you have. Thank you very, very much for what you did for all of us. We all appreciate that. And number two, just person to person, not even about city council, thank you, sir, for picking up that trash. That's really cool. 18 pounds of trash. Just me as a person, thank you very much, sir. Me sitting on city council, certainly thank you, sir, for everything that you did. Uh, I think that's super cool. And then the only other thing I have is Mr. Fitzgerald. I didn't know you played an instrument. I'm dying to know. Would you share with all of us? I used to cook. I used to cook. Yeah. All right, uh, Vice Mayor Fister. Um, nothing other than I'm going to miss the employee. I always enjoy coming to the employee Christmas party. I'm going to miss that this year. I've got some already planned that I'm going to be doing that day. And uh, I'm just glad this meeting's almost over. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know if I can come to the Christmas party. I'm still waiting to find out if I have a trial next week. So, um, And of course, you have the biggest parade ever for the first parade I've missed in forever. I'm like, that's why it's huge, and you know how much I love parades. I'm, I'm tempted to be like, can I just come really late to my own party <laughs> so I can make the parade? Um, other than that, I hope everyone comes up to Light Up to Fairies. It's one of my favorite events. And uh, with no other business, uh, I'm going to close this meeting.